Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about pseudo gout, also known as calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition disease. So let's get started. But before we get started, remember that gout was the big toe. Pseudo gout, however, is the knee, the wrist, the shoulder, the ankle, and the MCPs. Joint disorders are non inflammatory, inflammatory, septic, or hemorrhagic. Pseudo gout and gout are here. Inflammatory. Is pseudo gout non inflammatory like osteo or inflammatory like rheumatoid? It's inflammatory like rheumatoid, and that's why both of them can affect the MCP joints. Here's a quick list of the non-inflammatory and inflammatory rheumatological disease. As you know, pseudogout and gout are here. They are inflammatory and that's why ESR and CRP may be high. The difference between inflammatory and non-inflammatory joint disease was discussed before. Rheumatological diseases are either monoarticular, oligoarticular or polyarticular. How about pseudogout? It could be either one. Does it affect the DIP? No, I will leave that for osteo and psoriatic arthritis. Does it affect the MCP and wrist? Yes, indeed. It's very similar to rheumatoid. Does it affect the big toe? No. Is pseudogout acute or chronic? It's acute. So is it possible for it to be chronic? The chondrocalcinosis can be chronic, but not the acute attack itself, not the painful arthritis. Is pseudogout asymmetrical or symmetrical? Usually asymmetrical. Does it affect the axial skeleton or the peripheral joints? peripheral joints such as knee, wrist, shoulder, ankle, etc. Is it autoimmune disease? Oh, stop it, it's not. So, pseudogout is inflammatory, affects the MCP and the wrist, but the number one joint is the knee. It could be mono, oligo, or polyarthritis. It's acute. The chondrocalcinosis can be chronic, but the pseudogout itself is acute. The arthritis is acute. Joint disease, it's peripheral and it's not autoimmune. If this was very fast, I know because we have discussed all of this before in my rheumatology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. There are more than 50 of these. If you are a visual learner, but you have not tried Picmonic before, I don't know what you're waiting for. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. They have a mobile app as well. Crystalline arthropathy, inflammatory arthritis caused by deposition of microscopic crystals into the joints or other tissues could be acute or chronic types based on the crystals. Gout, pseudogout, or pseudo pseudo. Gout, it was monosodium urate crystals. In pseudo gout, which is today's topic, calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals, CPPD. D is for deposition because it's calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition disease. Pseudo pseudo gout, also known as hydroxyapatite arthropathy. It's hydroxyapatite crystals, also known as basic calcium phosphate crystals. Add the previous bullet points together and you get the definition. Acute pseudo gout, crystalline inflammatory asymmetrical mono oligo or polyarthritis that involves peripheral joints, knee, wrist, shoulder, MCPs, elbow, and ankle. Due to deposition of microscopic crystals, what are these crystals? CPPD, calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals. They are more common in the elderly. Acute pseudogout is an inflammatory freaking arthritis, so expect all of the findings of inflammatory arthritis. We have talked about all of this before. And here is a case for you. A 68-year-old male comes in complaining of right knee pain. The patient admits that the pain is worse in the morning. Physical exam, inflammation of the right knee. But not just that. Left shoulder, right second and third. Metacarpophalangeal joints, as well as the elbows. The inflammation is worse in the right knee. It's warm, it's red, it's swollen, it's tender. It here refers to the knee, okay? He has a history of osteoarthritis. What's the best next step? Pause. And the answer, of course, when you see a warm, red, swollen, and tender joint, what do you do? Arthrocentesis, baby. Why? Number one, to rule out septic arthritis because it's a freaking emergency. And number two, to confirm the diagnosis. Also, because if it's inflammatory and you decide to give steroids, you better rule out infection before you give steroids, doofus. Next, the same patient is here. Arthrocentesis came back, revealing intracellular, I mean inside the neutrophil, crystals that are blunted rhomboid and are weakly positively birefringent under polarized light microscopy. What's the most likely diagnosis? What's expected on x-ray of this right inflamed knee due to this specific diagnosis? So, pause. 
And the answer is, since this is weakly, positively birefringent crystals that are rhomboid in shape, this is of course pseudogout. Where is pseudogout here? It's the CPPD disease, man calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition disease. What's expected on x-ray due to this specific diagnosis, due to the pseudogout? Sunburst pattern, ah uh, no, what's that? This is osteogenic sarcoma or osteosarcoma. Onion skinning, nope, this is... Ewing sarcoma. How about chondrocalcinosis? This is the correct answer. Chondro is cartilage, calcinosis is calcium, and osis is condition. So this is a condition of calcium in your cartilage. Cartilage loss and bone growth, osteophytes. This is osteoarthritis. Cartilage loss and bone erosions and osteopenia. So this is loss of cartilage and bone. This is rheumatoid. Notice the difference between DNA. D, cartilage loss, but bone growth. This is osteo. E, cartilage loss and bone loss. This is rheumatoid. Because the O2 antibodies don't give a rip. Next, same patient, but now we have a hypothetical existential question. If this patient were 40 years old instead of 68, what else should you do? And now pause. And the answer is, if this is pseudogout and the patient is young, eh, something else is going on. You screen for hemochromatosis and primary hyperparathyroidism because they are associated with pseudo freaking gout. And that's how you can become a better flipping doctor instead of just memorizing. Yeah, watch Medicosis and go to Picmonic. Pseudo gout risk factors or associations, aging. And by the way, many patients who are old have osteoarthritis, so they can come together. Epiphyseal dysplasia and other diseases, most of them are metabolic. Hemochromatosis, that's a biggie. Primary hyperparathyroidism, also big. Hypophosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, Gittelman syndrome, post menisectomy, which is removal of your meniscus, chronic gout, and even hyperthyroidism. If you have noticed, primary hyperparathyroidism, hypophosphatemia, and Gittelman syndrome, all of them are associated with hypercalcemia. What was the name of the crystal? Calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate deposition disease. So this is calcium. That's why hypercalcemia makes sense, because they will precipitate in your freaking joint. Medicine makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Risk factors of pseudogout, sporadic or association. So there is no such classification, I just made it up three minutes ago. Sporadic means it came just for an unknown reason, we have no clue. Probably the patient is old, this is sporadic, nothing else is going on just this problem. If the patient is elderly, yeah, you can argue that there is probably osteo as well. Associations, we have metabolic disorders and non-metabolic disorders. Metabolic, hemochromatose, primary hyperpara, hypophosphatemia, hypomagnesemia, chronic gout, and even hypothyroidism. Non-metabolic, Gittelman syndrome, post menisectomy, and epiphyseal dysplasia. If the patient is old and there is pseudogout, you're done. If the patient is young and there is pseudogout, you're not done. You should go fishing, trying to find extra stuff, hemochromatosis, primary hyperpara, etc. What are the joints affected in pseudogout? The knee is the number one joint, also wrist, shoulder, elbows and ankle, MCP, B specific, second and third, MCP, B specific in the wrist, triangular fibrocartilage of the wrist. Okay, notice, wrist and metacarpophalangeal joints. Is this similar to rheumatoid or osteo? Of course, rheumatoid, because both are inflammatory. It's not similar to osteo, osteo is non-inflammatory arthritis. Signs and symptoms of pseudogout, acutely tender, worm and ridden swollen joint, probably the knee, could be possible in other joints. It affects the MCP, osteo does not. Pseudogout can cause synovitis, osteo cannot. Remember chondrocalcinosis, you can find this in acute patients or chronic patients, because this is a line that you'll see inside the cartilage in x-ray, it's not going away, whether it's acute or chronic. Oh, and by the way, my cardiac pharmacology course is on sale until the end of the month. This has 50 videos. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. Now let's perform arthrocentesis on a patient with pseudogout. The knee is the most commonly affected joint. Normally you should find this and you should find no crystals. But in pseudogout, it's an inflammatory freaking arthritis. So you'll find white blood cells greater than 2,000 but less than 75,000 per microliter. And you'll find crystals. Are the crystals negatively birefringent? Oh, shut up, this was gout. The crystals are positively birefringent. The crystals are weakly positively birefringent. The PMNs are high, white blood cells are high. 
Normal people are here. Patients with osteo are here. Patients with rheumatoid, gout or pseudogout are here. Patients with septic arthritis are here. We have talked about purine synthesis, purine degradation and de novo purine synthesis. Is this related to pseudogout? Oh, shut up. It's not, not related to pseudogout. And that's why it's useless to give allopurinol or fiboxostat. It's not gonna help. Because in pseudogout there are no freaking monosodium urate crystals. How do you diagnose pseudogout? History. Either a patient who is elderly with osteo, usually a male, but not always, or a young patient, by, by young I mean less than 50, with primary hyperpara or hemochromatosis. Physical exam, acute, warm, red, tender, swollen joint, usually the knee. Labs, first thing, stick a needle and send it to the lab. Intracellular rhomboid shaped. CPPD crystals weakly positive pyrofringent under plain polarized light. Serum and urine, you can use them to rule out primary hyperpara and hemochromatosis if the patient is young. Imaging x rays, very important, and you will find chondrocalcinosis. It comes on the exam all the time, and most students will answer this incorrectly. What does chondra mean? Cartilage. What does calcium mean? Calcium. What does osis mean? Condition. That's why the name of my channel is Medicosis Perfectionalis. It's a condition of perfect medicine. What is chondrocalcinosis? Look at this. This is the normal joint. Look at the joint space. Beautiful, but this is chondrocal. Look at the cartilage, man. Look at the, look at this line. You know this? This is the chondrocalcinosis. Calcium is like rock. Bones are the calcium, so that's why they appear white. That's why you see a white line inside the freaking cartilage. And sometimes you see this in the joint space. Yep, those are the CPPD crystals. We have talked about birefringence in my video on gout diagnosis. Gout crystals, they are needle-shaped, yellow when parallel, blue when perpendicular, and they are negatively birefringent, as you know. However, pseudogout, rhomboid-shaped, blue when parallel, yellow when per 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 perpendicular, so they are the opposite to gout, and they are weakly, positively birefringent. These were strongly negatively, strongly negatively, weakly, positively. Treatment of gout involved. Acute gouty attack, you have steroids, non-steroids, and colchicine. And chronic gout, you're trying to decrease production or increase excretion of uric acid. Is uric acid involved in calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals? No. So shut up. There is no trying to mess up with the uric acid. So you focus here, baby. Non-steroidals, steroidals, and colchicine. And treat the underlying cause. If the patient has hemochromatosis or primary hyperpara, hypothyroidism, etc., so here is the treatment of pseudogout. Non-steroidals, steroidals, and colchicine. Colchicine is ah, not as good as with gout. Glucocorticoids, should I give them locally or systemically? You can try either one. Interleukin-1 inhibitors may work, such as the famous anakinera. And please don't forget to correct the underlying disease, such as hemochromatosis or primary hyperparathyroidism. Here is pseudogout when it's parallel to the plain polarized light. And here is pseudogout when it's perpendicular to the plane polar. Have you noticed the rhomboid-shaped crystal, which is made of calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate? However, if you change the direction of the plane polarized light and you see this, or the red compensator, this is the pseudogout again. So it's blue in parallel, yellow in perpendicular. And this is the most important page in the entire video. If you really hate your textbook, try Picmonic. They have animated medical mnemonics. They are great for medical students and nursing students and pharmacy students. I love them, especially in microbiology, pharmacology, and all the rare genetic diseases and the brain tumors. These guys are fantastic. You will not regret it. Go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. And I've shown you how to treat uric acid using a Picmonic before. For acute gout, you use colchicine. You use non-steroidals, the SAD-N, and glucocorticoids on steroids. And for chronic, you use xanthine oxidase inhibitors or probanacid. Pause and review and try to recall. They have hundreds of picmonics and after each one, there is a quiz. Multiple choice questions. It's picmonic, baby. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. And please go to picmonic.com slash VIP hookup slash medicosis. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. And with picmonic, medicine is really fun.